all art makes use of colour and shape in some way. Your eyes can be drawn to certain parts of an artwork when shape and colour is used correctly. Artists use colour to express themselves and aim to make you feel something when you look at it. What do you think about these paintings? How has the artist used shapes, patterns and colours? In today's lesson, that's exactly what we're going to be exploring. You will need a ruler, a pencil, a pencil sharpener, a selection of colouring pencils, some shapes such as a little square book or a rectangle, something circular, a few circles if possible, and of course you'll need some paper or a sketchbook. What is a shape? In art, a shape is an area enclosed by a line, such as a square or a circle. It could be just an outline or it could be coloured in. Can you think of any more shapes? For this task, all you need to do is draw around a few objects. You may need to get an adult to help you hold your objects still. But see how much you can do by yourself. Objects to overlap so that they're not separate from each other. You may want to switch between squares, rectangles, circles, or if you don't have any of these things available, you can just do some freehand shapes. You can get your ruler and at an angle draw through it. My ruler's broken there, I didn't realise. So draw through. You can even use shapes multiple times. So what you're aiming for is a page. Lots of different shapes on it. I'm going to come back to my larger circle. Make sure your pencil makes contact with the object. So as you can see, as I'm drawing around these objects, I'm holding it flat and my pencil is running alongside the object. So it should always make contact all the way around. They're, they're best friends. The shape and your pencil are best friends. What you're aiming for here is balance. So you've got a nice balance. On this side, if there's anything that's empty, then put some more shapes in. On this side, if there's anything empty. It doesn't have to look the same, but you want to try and get a balance. So see if you can balance your work. What is a pattern? A pattern is a design that is created by repeating lines, shapes, tones or colours. Have a look around the room you're in now. Can you see any patterns? Now here comes the fun part. In each section, I want you to think of a different pattern to do. So you could use your ruler and you could decide that you want to have lines all in the same direction in this particular shape. So try as best as you can. It doesn't matter if they're a little bit further apart or closer together, but you're creating the same repeat pattern in each of them. Now when it comes to the next shape, I'm going to try and leave that out. So I have a shape on top and a shape behind. So now I want to think about what pattern I want to do in the middle part here. I quite like this diagonal line here. So I'm going to stick with lines and I'm going to make sure my line is in the same direction all the way down here. You can make yours as simple or as complicated as you like. So I've now created a new shape here. It's a diamond shape. So let's think about what we want here. I'm going to stick with my lines, but this time I'm going to make curvy lines and my curvy lines are going to be the same all the way across. 
see what lines you can do. So I've done lots of straight lines here. I've got squares where the lines are crossing over each other and I've got diamonds where the lines are crossing over each other. So I can also play around with zigzags. So a zigzag line goes up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. What is colour? A simple colour wheel is made up of three primary colours and three secondary colours. The three primary colours are used to mix any other colour. Can you name the three primary colours? Next we can explore colour. But before we choose any colours, I want you to think about which colours look the same. So, purple and blue look the same. Yellow and orange look the same. Blue and green look the same. So I want you to choose two colours that look the same. So I'm going to try choose a yellow and a slightly darker orange. So yellow and orange are my first colours. Then I'm going to use my colouring pencils to colour in different parts of the shapes and lines. Watch what I'm doing. Remember, for something to be a pattern, it has to repeat. So if I repeat the colours, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, I'm creating a pattern. Here's a little tip for you. If you're working with a dark colour and a similar lighter colour, like blue and green, once you've done your blue, you should be able to go over the whole thing with your green. And the blue is strong enough to still show. Now this doesn't work with every single colour. It works with orange and you can cover the whole thing in yellow. It would likely work with red and you can cover the whole thing in pink, but it doesn't always work. So my suggestion to you is check a little area that's not going to be too visible, something like that, and you will be able to see if you can save time and save your hands by going over the whole thing. Once you've coloured in all of the patterned areas, you can now colour in the other shapes that you see. And you want to think about balance again. So I have red and pink here, red and pink here, red and pink here. So it might be a nice idea to make this section pink. Now, you can colour in any way you like, but if you want to experiment with pressure, if you press harder with your uh, colouring pencil and then lighter, you're going to see different tones. Now, this is something maybe for the older children out there, but you can try and make it look slightly more 3D by making it slightly darker and slightly lighter in the middle. So I've got my pink there. Now, for this box here, I have the blue and the green over there, but I've also got the blue and the green here, so it's not going to feel very balanced. I've got the orange there and the orange there, but there's no orange here, so I'm going to go in with some orange and colour this bit in. So I'm colouring in the whole section, and I can play around with the tone. Now, if you decide that you want to stop and you want to leave some areas blank, then this is the perfect piece of art to do that with. Not every single area has to be coloured. If you want to challenge yourself, you can add colour in everywhere. I'm creating some background colours, but I don't want to colour in everywhere. So I'm applying lots of pressure the closer I am to the shape with my pencil, my colouring pencil. And then I'm fanning it out, so going from pressing harder to pressing lighter, pressing harder to pressing lighter, and cross hatching. So if you keep working over and over your lines, you'll get this really nice graduation of dark to light. And that means that you don't have to colour in absolutely everywhere, and you get these lovely tonal qualities appearing in your work. So there you have it, your very own exploration of shape, 
pattern and colour. Don't forget to share your work with us.